Let them cool down a little bit more. When you can do it barehanded, then you'll open them up. Uh, at home, I'll pull them out around, start pulling the kiln out, the pieces out. When I'm working by myself, I have my mask on. I have an activated carbon mask that's rated for fumes. You don't want dust masks because uh, you want something that's rated for uh, gases and fumes. So 3M activated carbon filter mask that it, usually it's going to be a double, it might be a single cartridge, but uh, they're only good for a certain period of time. There is a used by date, you know, so if, if it's uh, when I am opening up these packages, you know, unwrapping them, and the fumes are thick, even that mask isn't going to get all of the fumes. So I breathe shallowly until I can establish I'm okay before I take full breaths. It's like I was out there working, I'm just taking a sip of air, and if it's got stuff in it, I just hold my breath, duck, and get out of the way. Don't, you know, don't just get out there and forget about it, because you might get hurt. How about if you just left the pots for like a couple hours before you unwrap it? That would work fine, except if it's got real big black areas on How the pot, I want to get on them with a torch while you still can and affect the color of it. If you have some leaves on there and it just blackens the whole area, you can take that torch while it's still hot and paint it and it'll go iridescent. And it stays iridescent. So anyway, what, uh, about this firing. I'm looking in there until the edges of the tin foil start getting wrinkly and dull. And I'm looking to try to get all the pots to have a little bit of wrinkly foil look to them. That's just kind of a sign because tin foil will start losing its integrity at around 1100 degrees. Um, there are times when I may accidentally burn the whole, all the foil off one side of the pot and sometimes they look fine. A lot of times that will be a very white burnt out area. So anyway, I was looking in the kilns. I shut these off at 1,200 degrees. It took a long time compared to my little kiln to get up to temperature because there's a lot more soft brick in it. It's got hard shells, hard brick supporting it. Just a larger kiln, it took longer. So I didn't go to what I typically go to, which is around 1,400 degrees. You're looking in there until you establish what your kiln does you're going to have to be looking for physical signs. And the physical sign of this is wrinkling and uh, losing the shine on the foil. And uh, when you got a majority of those pots in there that are starting to lose their shine, go ahead and shut the kiln off, see what that load looks like, and then adjust your temperatures to suit. Uh, if we were to unload this and have another load ready to go, it's going to fire twice as fast because that kiln is already warmed up. So maybe next time we do it, we'll uh, either have the warm up the kiln and then put a coal brick underneath each pot, or we'll do some horsehair and then roll on into ferret. When we get on into, uh, you know, this is I'm gonna we're gonna walk you through these techniques, and then you guys are gonna take over firing the kilns because there's no point in having me do everything and you go home and don't know how to do it. Um, Let's talk generally about getting a, you, you, you just saved up a big pile of cash and you got your first raku kill and you set it up in your yard or wherever. You know nothing about firing a kill, raku kill, and um, you, you start firing a raku kill and it's broad daylight, just bright as day. There's no cover, no nothing. You cannot see whether you're getting flames coming out of the top of the kiln. I've done this. I had been raccooning for 15, 20 years, and I had set up demos, and it was just blindingly white sunshine. I couldn't get the kiln to go any hotter than 1,100 degrees, and the more I turned up the gas, the colder it got. And finally, something, I found a dark background, and I ducked in where I could line up the the exit flew, and it looked like a rocket ship. It was. It had a four-foot flame shooting out the top. Does it? Does anybody not know why? If you keep turning the the gas up, it goes down. Unburned gas is cold. It can't burn until it gets enough oxygen. So all of that unburned gas. Some of it was burning, but not all of it. It was inefficient, and. So it only lit off and burned all of the gas 
hasn't left the kiln. So, efficiently firing your kiln for the first time, fire it up at nighttime. Okay, have lights where you can see what you're doing. But when you're trying to figure out whether you are in oxidation, which means there's plenty of oxygen in the kiln to burn all the gas up. Oxidation, there's no flame licking out the top of the kiln. Reduction is too much gas to be consumed inside the kiln, and you'll get a flame coming out the kiln. If you guys have done high fire, you know what reduction smells like. You get an oily taste on your tongue. That's unburned gas. People who do heavy, heavy reductions, they can do that without big black billows of smoke. You can use these oxy probes, and you can be at a really strong reduction and still not have oily black smoke coming off your kiln. You're wasting gas. Um, the perfect firing for raising your temperature is neutral. Neutral is the right amount of oxygen versus the right amount of gas, so you get 100% consumption, but not too much oxygen. Too much air getting in the kiln cools it down, and unburned gas cools it down. So there is a difference in too much gas or too little gas. Raku kilns are the blunt instrument of pottery firing. They are not as uh, um, a fine instrument as maybe a high fire kiln when you're trying to get that last cone to drop and you're fiddling with your dampers one way or the other. Uh, usually you have a burner that's way bigger than your kiln needs on a Raku kiln. So you can easily do one or the other. But after you get up to about a thousand degrees, you should be able to dial it into neutral. And neutral is, at nighttime, you can see one little ghost flick of flame come off that exit flue of the kiln every now and then. And you know you're about as close to the most efficient use of gas and oxygen you're going to get. If the, think about a potato in the muffler. You know, the old trick where you shove a, a potato, I've never done this. <laughs> You, you, you want to play a trick on somebody, you shove a potato in the muffler of their truck or car. There's a little bit of oxygen in the, in the engine, so you turn the key on and it fires up, and then it stalls out and backfires and does all sorts of crazy stuff. It's not because it can't get oxygen in, it can't get fumes out, and so it stalls and goes down. So if the hole in the top of your kiln is too small, you can't raise the temperature, you can't turn the gas on high enough to get the temperature high enough in your kiln. It, it's like having too small of a motor or too small of a exhaust pipe for your motor. Let's say your mo the, the, the burner is the motor. You have oxygen in at the